Hi there, I'm Chris Rathbone and I'm a freelance sports illustrator. I've been working as a illustrator now full time for about six years and I've worked for a range of clients within the sports industry. I use Affinity Designer for a lot of my projects and I've previously put together a couple of videos now for Affinity, walking you through my process of how I create various illustrations. And Affinity reached out to me recently and asked me to put together another one. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a illustration of a sports athlete in action with lots of motion and movement going on. I'm gonna be starting off working on the iPad uh, where I'm gonna work up a sketch and talk you through the process of how I create a sketch which I would send over to the client to get to approve before I start to work on the final illustration. And then I'm going to move over to my Wacom and I'm going to be working up the illustration in full from there based on that sketch. Now don't worry if you don't have an iPad or a drawing monitor or anything like that you'll still be able to follow along with this tutorial uh, and you can still use the mouse and keyboard shortcuts and the tools within Affinity to create some really cool work. If you do have an iPad or some kind of drawing tablet though, it's really going to help you, especially in that sketch stage of the illustration. Alternatively, before I went full time as an illustrator and I had my studio set up, I would still sketch in a conventional way just with pencil and paper. And you can take that sketch, take a photo of it and upload it to your computer. So there's still workarounds with this if you don't have an iPad or, or a Wacom or some kind of drawing tablet. Anyway, let's jump into the tutorial. Um, we'll get started with the iPad where we're going to work up our sketch. So we're going to get started here and open up a new document. Uh, I'm just going to set this up as a web-based document for now. So I'm going to set it to a kind of 4 by 5 aspect ratio. So we're going to go 1,000 pixels by 800. And we're going to set this to 72 dpi. So now we've got our artboard set up here. We've got a portrait aspect ratio, as you can see. And I'm just going to go ahead here and set up a new layer to start off with. And we're just going to rename this layer Sketch. And it's really good as we start to build this drawing out, it's a really good habit to get into of renaming your layers. Just so as the drawing evolves and gets more complicated, uh, we can go back through and easily and quickly see which layer is which, so we can jump in between them as we need to edit them. So I'm just using the pencil tool here to sketch with, and I'm going to set our straight width to one. And I'm going to start by putting a horizontal line here, kind of in the middle of our composition. And I'm going to draw a line coming off of here, which is going to form the basis of our torso here. So coming off the horizontal line, which is going to be our hips, I'm now going to draw down where I want one of the legs to be. And I'm going to draw another horizontal line, which is going to form the shoulders. I'm just going to scale this all down and move this down a bit, just so we've got a bit more room in here. Now the hips and the shoulders will fall kind of along the same plane. You'll see they're almost parallel to each other, slightly off, but almost parallel to each other uh, because generally the hips and the, the shoulders are going to be along the same plane. I'm going to draw in the head here. At this stage, as you can see, we're keeping this super rough. Don't worry about any kind of detail. At this point, we're just trying to get the rough dimensions and proportions correct. So with the head, I'm going to angle the head so it's facing slightly down because the player is going to be looking at a ball. And off the shoulders here, I'm just going to draw where I want the arms to go. And again, this is super rough at this stage. And obviously feel free to use reference images to get poses. If you see a really cool photo that you like the pose or the body angle of, use those for sure. I use that in a lot of my work. What we're trying to do here is I'm trying to get a curvature to the body so that we're capturing the body in motion which makes for a more interesting composition. So I'm going to draw the feet off here. So this foot's going to be planted and she's going to be mid stride. So this other leg is going to be off of the floor. And I'm just going to draw the ball in here. And the cool thing is you can switch between the pencil tool and then the move tool and you can scale up some of these elements. So if one element's slightly too big or if you want to move things around. So for example, I want to move the ball around. You can just select these elements using the move tool uh, I'm just going to scale the head up here slightly because it feels a bit small. And you can just start to move these elements around to get your proportions right and play around. Now this obviously comes with a lot of trial and error, um, a lot of practice over the years. Um, but at this stage you're just trying to get the basic, almost like a skeleton of your sketch. So I'm happy with how that's looking. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and set up a second layer above our first sketch layer. And I'm just going to call this Sketch 2. And this layer is really going to be where we start to flesh out a few more details um, 
And if this is the kind of skeleton that we've drawn, we're going to flesh out and put um, some body parts and skin around that skeleton. So we're going to work in a lot more detail. So I'm going to take the opacity down from my sketch layer to about 50% just so that the lines that I draw over the top now are more prominent and they stand out more so I can see what I'm working on. And on this sketch two layer, I'm just gonna go in here and we're still super rough at this stage, but I'm just kind of fleshing out the drawing a little bit more. So I'm gonna start with the head here. So I'm gonna get a more accurate oval and the player's gonna have long hair. So I'm just gonna put a, a bun around the top of the head here where the hair's gonna be tied up. And obviously because she's moving, a really cool thing to do with, with characters with long hair is obviously you can move that hair to add to that sense of movement and energy. So we're going to have some hair off here. Again, I'm going to work in the angle at which I want the face, which is going to be kind of looking off to the left of our composition and down towards where the ball is. I'm going to work in some more details here around where the hair and ears will be. Again, you will get things wrong. As you can see, I'm, this isn't quite where I want that to be. So I'm just going to work the ear further down here. And that's one of the beauties of working at such a low detail, really sketch rough draft. So I'm just gonna work in some eyes around here. I'm gonna put the brow in and then the eyes off of there. Again, that's not quite right. So I'm just gonna move that down. It can be a bit tricky working on an angle where a head is obviously off to an angle like this because you need to rely on getting your elements and the placement of those elements in proportion to each other correct. So it is a bit more a challenging composition but again, you can just move things around, delete them, don't be afraid to, to sketch them out, move them if it's not quite working. I'm gonna draw in just the details of the neck here. Now, because the player's got her head down and looking down towards the ground, you're not gonna to see too much of the neck because the head is angled above it. So the neck's gonna be quite short. The shoulders here are gonna be coming in um, quite high up relative to the head because the head is covering the neck as it's looking down. Now at this stage, obviously, as you can see, I'm not working in any detail with, with arms and fingers and things like that. Just get this rough torso positioning correct because everything comes from there. Now I'm going to start putting in some very rough sketch lines for where I want the arms to be. Again, following my skeleton sketch, which we had on the layer below. And I'm not going to get too bogged down in terms of details in fingers yet because I might move this around and I might not be happy with how it's looking. So I'm just going to round this the hand off for now and move over to the right side now and work in the arm. Now this arm is very much um, in a lot more movement. So this is hanging down almost completely vertical by a side. So I'm gonna draw in again the t-shirt. And as you can see, this is super rough at this stage. Don't get too bogged down with detail. Draw in the other side of the torso here. Just gonna move that around because I wanna change the angle slightly. And I'm just gonna put in some quick lines down here for the other arm. Yeah, and as you can see from here, so again, it's another reason not to work in too much detail. So I think the skeleton, the skeleton works well when you've got it there, but actually when you come to start putting some flesh on these bones and sketching them out, the angle of the arm looks quite unnatural being that almost like it's hyperextended. So I'm just gonna keep it straight. So again, I'm using the skeleton as a base, but feel free to change bits and pieces. That's one of the advantages of putting the layer back to 50% beneath so that you can sketch over the top and change bits if you need to. Again, not worrying too much about the fingers, just putting some very rough positional lines now. And I'm gonna move down and start working onto the legs and the lower torso. Now the leg on the left, so the character's right leg is obviously gonna be nearer to us. So we're gonna use a process, it's called foreshortening. So it kind of adds some perspective to your drawing. So where it's nearer to us, it's gonna be bigger and thicker than the leg which is further away from us, uh, which gives you a nice sort of sense of depth. So I'm almost over exaggerating and curving the leg here. And the leg behind um, is relatively thinner and a bit shorter and obviously it's much straighter because this is gonna be our planted leg. Again, I'm just gonna select these lines and move them in because it's made that leg very thick. And again, this is the beauty of just working around with these rough sketch lines now. Now to get the height of the lower leg correct, I'm just gonna start at the bottom and work up towards the knee. And I'm just gonna draw the foot in here, again, super rough. Thin the leg off here, actually looks a bit thick. And now I'm gonna move back as well. That's our planted leg. It's better to get the planted leg in because that's the one that's onto the floor. This leg's gonna be in motion and movement. So now we can get the proportions of this leg right based on our planted leg. And the foot's gonna be off the floor, uh, kind of as if she's dribbling and running with the ball. 
Now I'm gonna use the ball. Um, obviously, as you can see in my skeleton sketch where I put a floor in now, the ball's floating too high in the air. So I'm just gonna work in a ball around here. You can use the shape tools and I will use the shape tools later on. But again, at this stage, we're keeping a super rough sketch line. So don't worry too much about accurate circles and detail like that. And I think that sketch is looking pretty cool. I'm happy with how it's coming together. So I love to use the iPad for sketching. Um, I find it's much more natural sketching in Affinity Designer on the iPad. And it's also really handy, obviously, if you're out on the move and, and working away from home um, or just sat on the sofa. Um, I find it's a really nice way to sketch. I love the pencil tool in, in Affinity Designer works really well. Uh, when it comes to working up the final illustration, obviously you're perfectly capable to build out the full illustration in Affinity Design on the iPad. Um, I like to move across to the desktop version just so that I can work in some more detail there. Obviously the screen on my Wacom is much bigger than my iPad. Um, so I, I just find it much easier to work on that larger screen. So the cool thing is you can flip between the iPad and the desktop version of Affinity Designer with, with literally no, no issue at all. So I've got the file saved here in a Dropbox folder. So I'm just going to open that file up on my desktop now and we're going to continue working this illustration up on the desktop. Again, feel free to carry on working on the iPad if you want. Um, this is just my preference for working and I think it's nice to give you both options to see how the desktop version and the iPad version of Affinity Designer work and how you can switch between them both. So now we've got a sketch which I'm really happy with. We're going to start working up the actual line work for the illustration now. I'm just going to go ahead and select these two layers. And I'm just going to turn my line work into kind of a light shade of blue. And I'm going to take the opacity down. I just find blue, obviously, we're going to be inking in black, so it's just easier if your sketch layers and skeleton layers are just in a different colour. Again, it's just preference. And I'm going to lock those layers. And we're going to set up a new layer here above these two layers. And we'll call it inking. And it's important that it's above these layers because we're going to be drawing over the top, so we want to make sure that our line work is dominant over our sketch work underneath. Now I'm going to be using a combination of the pen tool, the brush tool and the pencil tool um, for this line work. It really just depends on on what areas you're doing. I'm going to start with the pen tool I use for my kind of like the main outlines and the much more detailed lines that I want to get um, accurate. So for example around the side of the head here and the jawline, that's a very strong prominent line so I'm going to use the pen tool just so that I've got some flexibility here to shape that line how I want it to be. Now we're going to use the direct select tool, which is your white arrow. And you can go in and you can select these no points. And you can now manually adjust the angles and the position of those nodes, which is really nice just to make sure that you can really define that line and get it the perfect shape for how you want it. Now again, using that pen tool, I'm just going to go in here and work around the eyes. Now we're working in a lot more detail than we were on our sketch layers. We want our lines to be more defined, um, but we're still working relatively loose at this stage because more of the detail and definition will come in as we start to put ink in and shadows into this illustration in more detail. So don't get too worried about it being exactly correct at this stage. You'll see as the illustration fleshes itself out. That being said, we wanna make sure that we have some definition to our lines and that our lines are more accurate and tidy. So as you can see in here on the nose, I'm just going in here and sharpening that up so it's more of a point for the nose. And around the eyes here, obviously up to this point we've just been drawing in the, the line of the eyes themselves. But obviously we would have some lines around these eyes, which we're just going to draw in here now to kind of make it look a bit more three dimensional. I'm going to put in, again, still relatively rough, you'll see, that's not, the lines are accurate, but they're still rough at the same time. I'm going to work in the eyebrows here. And make sure you keep zooming out and zooming back in just to see how things are looking, otherwise obviously you get bogged down in the details, so it's good to see how this is looking by keep zooming out and getting a wider view of the composition. And I'm just going to work in the mouth. Again, our, our skeleton line that we had for the mouth previously was just a horizontal line. So I'm just going to work a little bit more shape into that and I'm going to draw some lines above and below which will form the part of the lips. And just a little line here for the chin again because the head is looking down you probably get a slight crease above where the chin would be and just a couple of lines either side of the nose. 
going to work around the top of the head here again using the pen tool just because this is going to be a longer more dominant line for the top of the head so I just want to have a bit more accuracy on the line and just for the shape of the ear again you'll see we're, we're putting a little bit more detail and variation into this line relative to our skeleton and sketch layers but don't worry yourself too much with the detail going to put in a few lines in here just add some detail into the ear and again you'll see we can take individual lines and move them around so I'm just going to move this line of the ear and I'm going to draw in the bun just again with a little bit more detail now when it comes to hair and clothing obviously where we're trying to capture movement and energy in this illustration what's quite nice is to leave some almost like unfinished lines in here so as I draw around the top of the hair here, I'm now gonna move into the pencil because I don't need this line to be as accurate because it's moving hair. So I'm gonna use the pencil tool. And again, just coming through trial and error, just playing around with some loose lines in here, which is gonna represent the flowing hair. So you'll see how these lines are much rougher and much looser than using the pen tool. But we still have the same stroke here which when we come on to looking at the brushes in a minute, you'll see how we can play around with that. So again, still using the pencil tool here just for the finer details of the hairline around the top and the sides. And also for this far, the ear on the far side of the head here. I'm just gonna put a few suggestive lines in for the hair just to show that there's obviously going to be fine hairs within here that are moving, so we're just adding a little bit of texture and detail at this stage. And again, like I was saying earlier, keep zooming out, but also keep turning off your sketch draft, your sketch layers, sorry, um, so you can see how this is looking. Now we're going to move into the brush. So at the moment, all of our lines have been quite uniform. So I'm going to select all of these strokes, and I'm just going to come down here to the brush pressure and taper these edges off and what this does is this gives us more of a tapered line which makes the brush stroke much more interesting and what I'm going to do to the next level is we're going to go and I'm going to select some of these outer edges and I'm going to increase the weight of these lines to be two point so you can see you don't want to do this with every line but you want to pick some of your dominant lines so around the edges of the head almost like the outlines around the ears the chin and a couple of lines in the hair I'm going to make these thicker and heavier so add some weight to our drawing now I've got the skeleton layer turned off, I can see this head's looking quite wide. Um, so just by using the move tool, I'm just gonna select a few of these elements, the jaw, I'm gonna refine the jaw here. I'm gonna move the ear in and just reshape the head slightly up here. Now just flicking back for our layers before, you can see how we've used that skeleton as a base in the same way of our sketch two layer, we used the skeleton as a base. We're now using our sketch two layer as a base for this layer. So I'm going to come in here now and work in some lines around the neck. And now what you'll notice is our brush is going to keep those same parameters and that same weight of line that we've already set up. So it gives us a nice tapered line here, which makes our line work much more interesting rather than just using a consistent thickness for the entire line. I'm going to draw in just a little bit of detail here for a collar. And again, just putting some creases in around the collar. Again, this just comes with trial and error, really. I might delete these later, see how it's looking, but I'm just trying to add in a few more detailed lines just so that our drawing isn't, has got more shape to it. Now, with the shoulder here, I'm gonna use the pen tool, and instead of just using a solid straight line, I'm gonna break this line up. I'm gonna put some distortion into the line by just adding some shapes to it so it's not straight. And like I mentioned earlier with the hair, leave some of the lines that they don't join. It really is a nice way to add some movement to the outlines of your drawing. And do a line down here for the torso and again before we just add a straight line I'm just going to taper that in slightly obviously the way the shirt is going to be tucked into the shorts it would taper in naturally and in the same way that I did for the head I'm going to select a few of these lines just to increase the stroke to two to add some weight to our drawings but you'll notice those internal lines I've left at one around the collar. And with the arm here just going to put in some loose arms and again before we just had a straight line but now we're going to come in slightly to the form of the elbow obviously where the elbow would come in 
a narrow part of the arm and then the arm would taper back out. And you can see how by using the pen tool I can get a bit more control of these lines and I can reposition some of these nodes if I need to. Now I'm going to work in the fingers here and just work in a little bit more detail than what we previously had but you can see I'm still working on that skeleton layer and that sketch layer beneath it as a guide. As I draw in the thumb here again just adding some variation to the line so it's not one straight line. And this just gives you greater control over the lines. So some of the fingers are obviously going to be hidden here, so you don't have to draw all five fingers or four fingers and a thumb. Um, but I'm just working in a couple of them here because some of the fingers would be hidden by the fingers in front of it, if that makes sense. So it's probably the most intricate area. Obviously fingers and hands are, are quite complex to draw and get right. So it takes a little bit more fine tuning here. You can see I'm going in quite a bit here with the, the no tool and just repositioning these lines. I'm pretty happy with how that is. So I'm just gonna work in a little detail there, just a fingernail on the thumb so that it's clear that the thumb is facing towards us, which really helps sort of complete the hand. And again, switch the layers off, just have a quick look. I think that's looking cool. Now I'm gonna go back to the pencil tool here and I'm just going to work in some brush strokes here. Again, just to add some creases around the bottom of the arm here. There's going to be some creases in the shirt. And I'm going to move over to the other side here and start drawing up the left hand side arm, uh, her right arm, in the same way. Again, use some broken lines, which is a nice way to add some movement to this fabric. And curve this round and work it in. And again, you can see I'm almost on top of my sketch two layer, but I'm just adding some variation to these lines so they're more interesting. Now and again, get the pencil tool, work in a few brush strokes inside here, just to add some detail into where the shoulder of the shirt would be. Now I'm gonna move on to drawing the arm now. So I'm gonna start the wrist and work back towards the sleeve of the shirt. And I'm just gonna work in some detail here with the hand. Now this hand is gonna be uh, a closed fist or the fingers will kind of be folded backwards. So we don't have to worry about working in as much detail on the fingers as we did on the other hand. Um, so I'm just gonna bring the line around here and just draw in almost kind of the top of the shape of the knuckles. So what I'm gonna do now just for the essence of time is I'm gonna speed up the video. Um, I think it's clear um, sort of where I'm going around here now. So I'm gonna fast forward it so you can see everything I'm doing. Um, and then I'll come back to you once I've completed all the line work. So we've got all of our line work finished and I think it's looking really cool. I'm happy with how it's come together. What I'm gonna do now is whilst we're still gonna be working on this ink inlay here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be going inside here and working in some 
areas of uh, black essentially which are going to be our darkest parts of our drawing so this is going to be like the first stage leading into our shadows so there's not going to be many of them but what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to take for example i'll start up here with the hair and i'm just going to draw in um, some shadows here again using the pen tool so i can get some accurate lines and i'm going to make this area in here black and this will kind of become more clear as we move on with the shading and, and coloring of the illustration um, but for now what we're doing is just working in some areas just so that we can add some depth to our illustration so i'm going to work in a bit more in here around the hair and i'm going to pull out some bits in the hair that's waving around behind her as well and what you'll see is this almost kind of pushes this back behind so it adds some depth to the illustration so obviously this hair is going to be further behind her head i'm going to go into the eye here now up to this point our eye has just been a, a straight line so i'm going to add some depth to the eye here because obviously she's going to be looking down so we're going to have a bit more depth in the eye and maybe even some eyelashes in here as well so it gives more of the impression that her eyes are open and looking down rather than it just being closed by just a, a flat straight line that we had so again on the other side here just adding a bit more depth just going to put in some more eyelashes using that same brush from this eye and again like we discussed earlier where the head is looking down at the ball the neck area is quite shallow uh, because obviously a lot of it's hidden by the head so i'm just going to put some dark areas underneath here for some real dark shadow and it really is a less is more approach with this particular stage we don't need to go into too much detail adding inking all over because otherwise your drawing becomes really dark and quite heavy um, but just pulling out like the the darkest areas of the illustration so again in the shorts here where the shirt's going to be over the top of the shorts is going to be cast in a very dark shadow and kind of in this area around here uh, where the legs are obviously moving there's going to be a high level of of shadow in this area around the shorts so once again i'm just going to speed up the video slightly So we've got all the inked areas added to our illustration now which has added a bit of depth to it it's starting to come to life so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new layer in underneath our inking layer called shadows and this is going to be where we're going to start to add in some shading so i'm just going to select like a light brown color here i don't like to go for black because obviously we've got a lot of black on the illustration already so i'm just going to select a light brown kind of shade and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to start working in our first layer of shading so I'm going to start at the top of the head here, start with the hair. We've also got a lot of dark shading in at the, the, like the tightest part of this bun on her head. So just outside of that, I'm going to work in some dark shading around here. Again, using a combination of the pen tool and the pencil tool. And we're just going to work our way around the drawing. So moving on to the rest of the hair behind her head here. Again, using the pen tool gives you a really nice, clean, controlled line. And switching between that and the pencil line to give yourself a, a more rougher line um, can add some nice contrast to the drawing. So I'm going to pick my own light source for this illustration. But our light source in this piece is going to be coming from the top left hand side of the composition. So any shading is going to be on the right hand side or most of the shading is going to be on the right hand side. So for example, the right hand side of the head around here is going to be in shade. And also the right hand side of her face is going to be more in shade than the left hand side of her face. The thing we need to think about as well is where she's looking down. There's going to be a bit more shadow cast on her face than there normally would be because her face is looking towards the floor, towards where the ball is. 
So again, this is kind of just trial and error. Um, and obviously I've been doing this for a while now, so you kind of get a good understanding of where these shadows will be. But just have a play around. There's no wrong way of doing it, really. Just have a play around and try to think logically about if there was a light source hitting her, what areas would be lighter and what areas would be darker. And as we bleed that round, that's also gonna come down into the neck. As we spoke about earlier with the head looking down, the neck's gonna be quite heavily in shadow. And I'm just gonna add a bit more shadow around onto the right hand side of her face here and around her right ear. So this process can be quite time consuming. And also if you've seen my other videos which I've done with Affinity, you'll probably be very familiar with this process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna speed up the video here and then you'll be able to see where I've applied all the shadows and what area we've got in shading. So we've got all of our shadows drawn in here. I'm just gonna set up a new layer. Now this layer is gonna be underneath our shadows. And we're gonna call this color, because this is gonna be the layer we're gonna to start to add color to our illustration. Now we're gonna set up a new global color up here. And again, for those of you that have seen um, my previous videos, you'll know all about the global colors. But essentially what a global color is, it's a color that we'll be able to edit at a later stage if we need to, and it will change that instance of that color throughout the entire illustration. So they're super handy to use. Um, it's one of my favorite things about Affinity Designer. So I'm just gonna set this up as a, a rough kind of skin tone. Again, we can tweak this at a later stage, so don't worry about it too much. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, again, using the pen tool probably for this because I wanna have very tidy lines. I don't wanna be coming outside of my line work, so I wanna have maximum control over where I'm drawing. So I like using the pen tool for this just for an accuracy point of view. And I'm just gonna draw around the edge of her head and I'm gonna keep inside of the hairline here because we'll do the hair separately in a moment. And I'm gonna fill that with our global color. Now already I can see that this is way too dark so I'm just gonna go into this global color and tweak it and you'll see how it updates in real time in the illustration. Again, we can tweak it again at a later stage. But what I'm gonna do now is I also set up global colors for my shading. So I can now go into that global color up here and I'm just gonna change that hue. So from the light brown color that we had set up when we did our shading, I'm just gonna make it a darker version of the skin tone. It's kind of a darker pink. So you can see now the shading around the face is in the same hue as the skin tone itself. Now the same process, I'm just gonna go down and work around the arm here with our skin tone. And you'll see already the shading around this arm has also changed to be the darker hue of the skin tone because it's our global color. So it's been affected all the way throughout the illustration, which is super handy, so it saves you going in and having to manually change every single piece of shading. So moving along to the other arm over here, same process, using the pen tool, I'm just gonna draw around behind my line work. And because our layer is underneath our inking layer, our inking layer remains on top, so we keep our nice clean artwork, and we get the block color and the cell shading come in behind and underneath that layer. So now I'm gonna work down to the legs in the same process. And I generally try and stick to 
working up each colored layer in one go. So for example, all of the limbs and the skin areas I'll work up whilst I'm working in this color. Then I'll move on to maybe the socks, the shorts, and just do each piece individually. So there's all of our skin tone worked up. She's looking okay. Obviously we're gonna add a lot more shading and lighting to this at a later stage. This is just our block color. Now I'm just gonna go in already. I can see now around the eye here, our sh shading that we've got is quite dark. So I'm gonna go back into our shadow layer and I'm just gonna put in an area of lighter skin within the, shade, within the shadow where the light would naturally catch the top of the eyelid. And I'm gonna select that shape and our previously drawn shadow area. I'm just gonna go up here to the divide tool, click divide, and then it deletes that shape from within the other shape. So it just softens that shade in here. And I'm just gonna move those nodes manually as well, just so that the, the shading around that eye isn't so heavy. So now using the same process, I'm just gonna go around the other areas. So next up, I'm gonna work up the shirt. Uh, I'm gonna kinda of go for a, a gray color for this. Again, I might change it at a later stage, but I'm just gonna stick with this for now. So set up a new global color, call it shirt, so we know which one we're working with later on. And using the same process, I'm just gonna go in around here and draw in on the shirt. And I'm gonna select the shirt with our global color. And I'm gonna send that to the back. And then in the same way that we did for the skin tone, I'm now gonna go in and select the global color that I use for the shading on the t-shirt. And I'm gonna change this to be a darker hue of our gray that we've used. So now the shading is much more complementary to the block color that we've got for our shirt. Now I think the process is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Again, it's quite time consuming. So in the essence of time, I'm just gonna speed up the video here. I'm gonna fill in all the areas. So the shorts, the socks, the hair, the shoes, the ball, etc. And then once I've selected my color for each one of those individual elements, I'll then play around with the global color that I've used for the shading for that element to make it more complementary of the color that we've used. So I finished coloring up the illustration and changing the hue of the shadows. So I've just dropped a little background color in there. And I've also dropped a logo on the shirt just to make the shirt a bit more interesting. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop a new layer in here above our color layer, but underneath our shadows layer. And we're gonna call this low lights. Now what we're gonna be doing here is where our shadows obviously at the moment are quite extreme. We're gonna add kind of a, a layer in between those two. So again, using our same principle of drawing down the right hand side of the face. On our low lights layer, I'm just gonna draw in here, come down the right hand side of the face, around the eye from the shadow that I previously drawn, down the right hand side of the nose, following the curvature of the nose, and then come underneath the nose around our shadows that we previously got drawn in, around the lips, and then down onto the chin, and around, continuing that down, onto the neck. And obviously, as we've spoken about a few times now, the neck's gonna be quite heavily in the shade because the, the head is above it looking down. So we're gonna follow our line around the neck, up the right-hand side of the face, and around into the ear. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna kind of add a, a, like a mid-tone between our skin tone and our shading layer. So we're gonna select it with our global color that we've got for our shading. And in the same way that I did with the eye a little while ago, I'm gonna draw in just a couple of areas here because we don't want it to just be all the same shade. So we're gonna draw in a couple of areas here, use the divide tool again to separate those out. And then I'm gonna set the opacity on this to about 50%. Now, because this is using the same color, the same global color that I've set up for my shadows, again, the hues match the skin tone. So I'm now gonna work onto the left eye, her right eye, because obviously there will be some shading around here but not as much as on the right-hand side of the face. 
So in the same principle, I'm just gonna draw around the side of the eye around here, up underneath the eyebrow, which would be casting a bit of a shadow down on the eye socket beneath it. And again, I'm gonna fill that with my global color for my shadows, but set the opacity back to about 50%. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. You can increase these or decrease these depending on how intense you want the shadows to be. But what you'll see now is on the face, we've got kind of a, a much smoother transition of the shadows. Now I might still lighten that at a later stage. Again, with these global colors, it gives you the flexibility and freedom to do that really easily. But for the time being, I'm just gonna work down onto the arm in the same principle using that same color. And for this, again, there's no real right or wrong way of doing it. Yeah, and just use your shadows as a guide to create a second layer of, of lighter shadow, essentially. Again, I'm just gonna draw some shapes in here. I don't like just having solid blocked areas of shading because it looks quite unnatural. So just put a few shapes in there just to kind of soften it so that it's not all one solid block of color. Select that to our global color for our shadows. I feel like the shadows are a bit heavy at 50%, so I'm just gonna lighten the opacity of those back down again. It's working a bit softer now. And then onto the other arm. Again, just working down here onto the top of the hand. Set that to our shadows and select the opacity down. I've gone for about 35, 40% here, just as a bit softer. And do the same on the legs. So again, in the essence of time, I'm gonna speed up the video here. You'll be able to see everything I'm doing. And then you can see where I'm at when I've completed the lowlights. So that's all of our shading and shadows done. So now we're gonna move on. We're gonna start looking at some lighting and some highlights to really add some depth to the illustration now. So I'm gonna set up a new layer. I'm gonna set this above my color, but below my shadows and low lights. And we're gonna call this glows. And this is gonna be our brightest highlight areas. So I'm gonna select a new global color. And I'm gonna start with the skin tones again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to be a really light version of my skin tones. And again, we can tweak this at a later stage, but for now I'm just gonna go for this kind of light pink, almost white. And just for filing's sake, I'm gonna move that next to my other skin tones over here so that it keeps it nice and simple, I know where everything is. Now, like we spoke about earlier, the light source is gonna be coming from the top left of this illustration. So the left-hand side of the face is gonna have the strongest levels of highlight. So I'm just gonna work down the left-hand side here and I'm gonna select that with our color. And again, I'm just gonna select another little shape here, just as a bit of light bouncing off of her forehead. And I'm gonna pull out a little bit just on the left-hand side of the nose here. Now, we're not going too extreme with these just yet because we will be adding another layer of highlights. So these don't need to be too strong. They're kind of just like the, the sharpest, most highlighted areas that will be picked up down the left-hand side. So continuing down onto the arm in the same approach. And then moving across to the other arm, I'm gonna pull out some highlights down this side of this arm as well. Now almost what you're doing is you're, you're mirroring the shadows, our first layer of shadows that we had, but on the opposite side, because obviously whatever areas are caught in the light, the shadows on the opposite side of that area are gonna be the same kind of weight. So I'm gonna pull out some areas just on the top of the leg here where the light's gonna be bouncing off the top of her leg. And this leg, where the leg is bent, the top side of the upper leg is gonna catch a lot more of the light 
than on the arms and the other leg which has been more on the side so this because the leg is facing up it's almost parallel to the ground the top side of the knee so we're going to get a lot more highlights on the top of that leg now the highlights work a little different from the shadows because uh, different materials and different textures are going to absorb and reflect light in different ways so i'm actually not going to go in and put any glows on any of the uh, the kit the fabric at all so the shirt the shorts etc because that fabric is not going to reflect light in the same way that her skin would, especially as she's obviously running around, she's probably a bit hot and maybe a bit sweaty. So I'm just going to keep the glows just to the skin. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a second layer of highlights in the same way it did for our shading. And this is going to be for our softer light. And this will catch the shirt and the shorts, etc. So I'm going to set another layer up here and I'm going to call it highlights. This one goes above our color, but below our glows. In the same way, I'm going to start working around the head and the face, focusing really on the left-hand side and the top of the head, so around the forehead and down the left-hand side here. And I'm going to select that with our global color for our glows. And again, I'm going to set the opacity down to kind of around 30-40%. So we're essentially doing the same process that we did for the shadows and the low lights, but this time we're doing it with glows and highlights. Again, working down the left-hand side of the nose here, pulling that out and knocking the opacity back. Then I'm gonna move down here to the arm on the left-hand side of our composition. And again, just playing around, just trying to pick a midpoint between where our highlights are already and where that shadow kicks in. Obviously, we wanna keep a nice area in between that has no highlights and has no shadows on it. So we get a nice curvature to that arm. So I'm just gonna pull out a couple of highlights on the knuckles here. And then moving over to the other arm. I'm going to go down the outside, down onto the fingers. And I'm also going to put out some areas on the knuckles around the thumb here as well. Just add a little bit of depth around there because I like to bounce off the top of the thumb here. And then moving down onto the leg, I'm going to pull out a larger area here on this leg going down onto the knee. And this leg, like we spoke about earlier, is gonna catch a lot more of the light than the other leg because of the angle. So I'm gonna pull out almost the whole top of this leg is gonna be in the light because it's almost parallel to the floor. So the light's gonna bounce off of it. And again, we'll knock the opacity back to around 30, 40%. And again, we can tweak that later if it needs to be. Now, like I said, we didn't pull out any glows on our fabric because the fabric won't reflect the light in the same way, but we are gonna do that with our highlights. So I'm gonna start off with the sock here in the orange and add a new global color, which is a much lighter version of our, a much lighter version of the color we used for the sock. And I'm gonna put out some areas around the edge of the sock here and fill them in with the lighter orange. Again, using a combination of the pen tool and the pencil tool. I'm gonna to pull out a few highlights around the top of this sock here as well. So as you can see, I'm just gonna work my way around the shorts and the t-shirt in this same way. So I'm gonna fast forward in the video and you can see where I'm at when it's done. So we're pretty much there with the highlights now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to add a bit more detail in. Going back to our colour layer here, I'm going to add some green in for the grass here. And I'm going to use the pencil tool because I want this to be quite rough. Obviously, it's not going to be very exact and intricate for the grass. Use the pencil tool just to draw some shapes. Fill that with our green. I'm going to add a little bit more over this side of the composition as well. So it gives a bit of a base for our player to be running on. And on the ball as well, I'm going to put some design details onto the ball. So I'm going to play around the colour of the ball and I'm just going to put a couple of star shapes on here to add some design to the ball itself. So using the pen tool, I'm conscious of the curvature of the ball so I want to make sure that my stars are bending in the same way around the curvature of the ball. Again, this is just trial and error, just have a little play around. And I'm going to put a stroke, a black stroke around them, like an outline, so that's part of the design. And I'm going to fill them with a colour. And I'll make the stroke quite thick. And I'm going to fill them with, a, I think, a blue colour will complement the orange from the socks quite nicely here as well. So I'm going to fill that with a blue. And I'm just going to draw in a couple more of these stars, just to add some design to the ball. I'm going to select the block colour that I've set for the background up here too. And I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is a really handy tool. And I'm just going to play around with the gradient tool up here, so that we go from a darker shade to a lighter shade at the bottom. So it adds a bit more depth to the drawing, and it's more visually interesting than just a flat block colour. And I'm going to add a few other design elements to the background as well to bring this to life, but for the time being, I'm just going to work with this gradient. Now we're kind of on the home stretch, so I'm going to start adding in some finer details into this illustration to help bring it to life. And I'm going to be working in the colour layer. I'm just going to use the pencil tool and I'm going to start putting some strokes in here of like a lighter brown colour in her hair. I'm going to play around with this, again set it up as a global colour so I can tweak it if I need to. And I'm going to use the pencil tool to just put some brush strokes within this hair now to pull out almost some highlights almost within the hair itself. And again, you want to keep these quite loose, especially as there's a lot of movement going on and the hair is obviously moving around as the player's moving. I'm just going to darken it up slightly. And put a bit more magenta in there so it's a bit more brown. And I'm going to add in some more of these brush strokes, particularly in the bun at the top of the hair and in these darker areas of hair that we've got. Obviously where we did our inking earlier on, in our heavily darkened areas. I'm just going to add some lighter strokes in there just to break up the thickness of that dark black area. And again, pulling out some strokes in the hair that's waving behind her. Just so it adds a bit more movement to the hair and the hair looks a bit more three dimensional rather than just the flat cell shading that we've currently got. I think that's working nicely. Again, keep zooming out just to check how it's looking. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to do a similar kind of process here on the grass. So I'm just going to use the pencil tool to sort of quickly and roughly draw out some, some scribbly lines in here that just adds a bit of depth to the grass using a lighter colour to pull out almost kind of the highlights. And then I'm also going to set up a new global colour for like a darker green in here as well, which is going to kind of form almost a, a kind of shadows within the grass as well. And again, just play around. You don't need too many in here. It's, again, it's that less is more approach. But it would just add a bit of depth to the grass and make it a bit more interesting rather than just being a flat green colour. And I think that's helping to make it feel a bit more realistic, especially around the grass around her feet. And I think that's looking cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new layer. And this is going to be our final layer now. I'm going to add a new layer in between our inking layer, just underneath it above our glows. And this is going to be our rim lighting. Now rim lighting is if you have a light source, that light source is going to catch the edges of the person and bounce off of those edges. And rim lighting is a really nice subtle way just to add, really add some curvature to your illustrations. So I'm gonna pick a light color, a light yellow color here. Again, we can tweak this later. And I wanna use a similar brush to the brush that I use for my line work. So I'm gonna have a tapered brush here. And I'm just gonna subtly pull out a few edges where I think the light would pick up on. So down the side of the head, around the top of the hair. 
Like I said, less is more. You don't want to go too over the top with these. I'm going to pull out a couple around the jaw here. And already you can see that it's, it's starting to help the head almost lift itself off from the body. So it looks a bit more three dimensional. I'm going to pull out some strokes around here on the, on the shoulders, around the top of the shirt. Bleeding down onto the arms. Now you don't want to pick these up on all the edges because like I said, it will then start to be a bit overkill and it will start to almost look like she's just being outlined. But especially around the top edges of the shoulders and the arms. And I'm going to pull out one or two just underneath the sleeve as well. So it helps to add some depth there because the light would obviously be coming around underneath that arm. And I'm just going to pull out a few bits here on the arm as well. Like I said, rim lighting is a really nice way of just pulling out some edges, just highlighting those edges and making it look like the light is bouncing off of those. And it adds a much more three dimensional element to your drawing. So I'm just going to go around the drawing here. I'm going to pull out a few bits. I'm going to speed up the video and just pull out a few bits here. So now you can really see, I mean, they, they are quite subtle, but those little glows and the bit of rim lighting that we put around the edges really helps to just lift the character off of the background. And speaking of the background, I'm just going to go in. So I'm happy with the rim lighting. So I'm just going to lock that layer. I'm going to go back down to my color layer here. And I'll add some more detail into the background for the finishing touches. So I'm just going to use the ellipse tool here. I'm going to fill that with the same yellow that we've used for our rim lighting. And then I'm going to duplicate this, Command D, and then I'm going to put another larger circle around it using the same central point. And again, I'm going to go back to our gradient tool up here, which is a cool tool that I like to use. And I'm going to select this to be a radial gradient. And I'm going to have the colors in here be the yellow from our rim lighting. But I'm going to set the other end, the opacity, right down to zero. So now what we've got is a kind of glow around our first circle that we drew and it looks kind of like a light like a light source and this is ultimately going to be our light source so we're going to make some floodlights that you would have in the football stadium and i'm going to duplicate this so if you just hold down the alt key and drag your shape it will create a duplicate of that shape with all three selected i'm going to hold down the alt key and drag them down to create some duplicates of those and then I'm going to put all of these into a group just so it's easier to manage and move them around because I'm going to duplicate them again. Just move them a bit more in behind her hair and I'm going to send this to the back in front of our gradient background but behind our character. I'm going to use the mirror tool up the top here and I'm going to put another set of lights on the other side. So now it looks like we've got floodlights behind her which again really adds some depth now. You can see it almost looks like she's coming out of the page. I'm going to draw a horizontal line down here and I'm going to put in a kind of abstract uh, stadium or at least tiered banners from a stadium to suggest that there is a stadium behind her. So I'm just going to draw a line around the back here. I don't want any tapers on this line or anything. I'm going to keep this line just a, a solid, consistent stroke width. But I'm going to knock the opacity back quite a bit and send this to the back again behind our character but in front of our background. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just duplicate this. And then I'm going to use our direct select tool, our white arrow that we were using earlier on, to put a node point in the middle. And then I'm going to add some curvature to this line. So we've kind of got like a three dimensional stadium looking here. So we've got the horizontal line, which would be on our horizon. And then the higher up those lines go, the more curvature there would be to them as they move further away from our horizon line, which is essentially the floor. And I think it's, it's quite nice as a subtle touch, it's just adds just kind of makes it look like there's a, a abstract minimalist stadium behind us, which adds some depth to the background and helps our character really pop in the foreground. So there we have the finished illustration. So if we go back and flick between all of our layers, we can see where we started off with our skeleton sketch, then our secondary sketch that we did, then our inking and our line work. And then flicking through, we had our color. Obviously we've added some background details into there since then. We've got our first layer of shadows, our second layer of shadows and then we go into our highlights and our glows and finally our rim lighting which really finishes off the illustration and helps it pop from the background so that's the end of the tutorial uh, i hope you've enjoyed this video and i look forward to seeing what artwork you create off the back of it